welcome to Morning Moments. Uh, so glad that you came to join us today. Today, I, I come to you with uh, a, a great guest. I'm so privileged to have him. He is a chaplain for Cowboys for Christ. And you may ask, why do the Cowboys need a chaplain? And I'm probably I'm sure he's going to tell us. Uh, it's my privilege to bring to you George Kilgore. Welcome, George, to Morning Moments. My pleasure, Andy. Tell me a, a little bit about yourself. What do you do and why do you do it? Well, I've been involved in, in the ministry for several years. I, I, I was a missionary for, for some time and you know, did prison ministry, that sort of thing, um, drug rehab, that, that, that type of thing. And, and I ran across an old friend I, I'd known for years. Uh, Dr. Dave Harvey, who is the executive director of Cowboys for Christ, and he and I started talking, and he, you know, he, he kind of indicated to me that the, the need that I really wasn't aware of in, in the cowboy world, what would be a rodeo or, or you know, horse shows, or different things like that. And, you know, not not to stereotype and, and say that people in, in the, the cowboy world is, is, is excluded or secluded from 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 the gospel, but we. Our goal as, as cowboy chaplains is to go places where the mainstream religion, main, main, mainstream uh, denominations don't really uh, don't really have a niche market on. So many times, I feel like us as as, as ministers, we we, uh, we almost shy away or, or, or shun uh, the, the type of people that, that Jesus spent most of his time with. Yeah, and 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 for us to be, you know true servants of, of, of God and, 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 to, and to reflect Jesus and, and, and the gospel. We, we need to go as the Great Commission, Matthew 28, to, to all ma mankind, not, not just to, to, to the religious people. You know, as Jesus himself so eloquently said, that the, the sick don't need a, a doctor, but it's the sick that the ones that the, the well, the, the well people don't need a doctor, but the sick are the ones that need the physician. And currently, there's uh, there's less than 200 uh, cowboy chaplains throughout the country. Uh, that that includes uh, the United States and Canada. And, uh, and I'm, I'm uh, I don't want to uh, offend any of our, our our viewers or our listeners, but uh, I feel like so much of the mainstream ministers, you know, when when they're called, that we're all on fire, we're all ready to go, we're all looking for wherever we can can, can spread the gospel. And after you've done it for a while, you, then you start going to the highest bidder almost. And, and that's, all, that's always bothered me. Yeah. And, and that's the great thing about that. One of the things I'm most impressed with about the Cowboy, Cowboys for Christ is, is we don't have any type of resources other than what uh, someone would simply donate out of the kindness of their heart. I, I've got a couple of real good friends that, that, that are ministers, and, and I had a privilege talking one over the weekend. I told them, I said, you know, if, uh, if, if, if if the church that where you're the pastor and been there forever, if they were to do uh, back up off that you know hundred plus thousand dollar a year salary and, and take that house, would, would you be back Sunday night? And he kind of paused for a minute. He said, uh, "You know, probably not." Well, you know, when, when Jesus gave us His promise, He told us to go and He take care of us. To go and He would supply our needs. He didn't tell us to go where we, where we can negotiate a salary. He didn't tell us to go where the high, to the highest bidder. Our promise and our faith is in the promise of God. At no point should our should our faith ever be in the promise of man. Our, our guarantee, is, our, our faith shouldn't be based on a guarantee. It's, it's really what I'm trying to say. So your your uh, demographic, so to speak, the the cowboy. Mm -hmm. When you mentioned rodeo and horse show. Uh, I, you know, uh, these are entertainment people that, that they go to, to rodeos or horse shows, and they're usually always on the weekend right. and they're always on the road going to the next horse show or rodeo. Mm -hmm. And, um, uh, instead of them going to the church, the church comes to them through, through the, through the eyes and through the ministries of this chaplain is it safe to say that that's where yeah. some where your most of your work is is those weekend people that don't go to church somewhere because of that, travel that's, that, that, that's where a lot of it is that, that's absolutely right Andy. That, that's that's the, 
and, and usually like most all, all the chaplains, we have other ministries that we do during the week, but our, our primary work within the cowboy world is on weekends. Yeah. Yeah. And it's a, it's a very uh, uh, busy, but it's, it's a, it's a very str- difficult lifestyle because you're on the road and you're also dealing with animals that are huge and can can hurt you real bad. <laughs> right, right. Absolutely. Yeah. So uh are you able to minister to some of the same people over and over as you as they come in or is it sometimes a different different folks? But sometimes it, it, most, in most cases it's going to be a, a, a different uh, participants uh, each, each time uh, you know some some of the, the bigger rodeos and i've not personally had the privilege to go to some of those that's more of your uh, you know professional pbr type guys and those, those are going to be some of the same ones but most of the, the rodeos and horse shows that we work it, it, it's it's quite a quite a, a variety of, of, of participants yeah yeah and and you, you know, it's it's great to see a ministry where people can come to you, and you're going right there. And like you said, Jesus went to where the people were at. Wow. And and I, one of my favorite sayings about church, although you know, I'm not, I'm saying churches we should forsake not the assembling of the saints together. Wow. We should go to church, but in this yeah. this this subculture here. You, here's an opportunity for you and your other chaplains to reach out to them. The church should not be a, a, a museum for the saints. They should right. be the hospital for the sick. Absolutely. And uh, with all the stained glass windows and, and the pretty pews, um, and uh, there's nothing wrong with that as long as the focus is on Christ. Right, right. But you get, you get to bring the gospel to people that may not have, uh, have would have ever heard a different was it for you right and, and we feel like as chaplains of, of the, the cowboys of christ that, that that's where our, our role is that, that's what our, our focus is and that's what uh, you know we feel like that's what god would have us to do is, is to go to, to the unchurched go, go, go to the, the places where, where, where people will pro- probably or, or possibly will not have heard the gospel otherwise is there follow up for these cowboys as they go from place to place where they could get uh, discipled? Well, we always give them. A, we've got a, a quite a, a variety of literature that, that we leave with them. You know, we've got the the, the Bible that, that's printed for the cowboys of Christ, and the disciple. We do have a discipleship program also that we uh, you know, we, we encourage them to uh, to participate in and, and, and to complete that that program. And we've got the Christian Ranchman, which is our our a little newspaper that comes out uh, every every two months. It, it's uh, six times a year, and we always try to get them, you know, to sign up for that. And, and that way, they can kind of stay in touch. It's got all all the, the, the chaplains, the contact information on on the bank, and regardless of what part of the country they that they happen to find themselves in, that there's always a chaplain that, that they'll be nearby in, in case they need need further, uh, you know, just discipline or what it be, uh, prayer request, whatever it is. But we we do try to do a little bit of follow up with. I'm always amazed when I, I talk to people with other ministries and other thing uh, and, and thinking outside the box, so to speak. And uh, sometimes folks just get so uh, put the blinders on, if I could use a horse expression, they put the blinders on and and they only see God in a church with four, you know, with four corners and that's it. But oh, there's so much more as we go into all the world and say, God, where is my world to preach the gospel? And that certainly is a different world is the cowboy world, isn't it? Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, what can do, what can people do for you? What when they hear this, what do you want them to get out of this this outreach? You know, the, the main thing, and anytime we go anywhere, we, we've always got, the, you know, the, the, the chaplain shirts on. We've always got the table set up with the, the banner and the literature. Uh, if, if you happen to find yourself at a horse show or rodeo, I mean, there's probably, there's, it's possible there's going to be at least one of us, possibly more than one, one of the chaplains there. And just, just stop by, visit with us, uh, let, you know, let us give you some literature, pray with you, uh, you know, and, and, and pray for us. That, that, that's, that's really what, what, what we're all about is, you know, we're asking for, for, for prayer everywhere we go 
you know, we're, yeah. we're, they're, 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 and you know, and I, I do a, a, a still do some drug rehab ministry. Matter of fact, my, my, my wife and I are, are started, kind of started doing another little thing that's totally unrelated to the, to the cowboy world. But, um, uh, my, my wife has been in a, a very abusive relationship in the past. So she's really got a heart for, for abused and battered women. And, and we've been doing a, a, a ministry with them uh, via Zoom, much like this. Uh, due to the, due to the, the COVID you know, outbreak, they're, they're not letting, letting us come in right now. But we're, uh, we're ministering to, uh, we're ministering to uh, abused and, 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 and battered women. Uh -huh. So God's opening so many doors for you. When you become available, God opens doors. God's not looking, folks, just for your abilities. He's looking for your availability. And That's when you it. say, God, whatever I have, and, you, and some of you are going to go, but I'm not equipped to do it. Well, God doesn't call the equipped always, but he does equip who he calls. And uh, that's important to say, God, I, I'm willing to do what you have, just like these folks have done. And then God's opening other doors for them. Uh, well, you, you know, Andy, I, I, this just kind of take you back to the very beginning of, of my ministry. I, 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 when God was calling me to the ministry, I, I was very reluctant because that, as I was growing up, my my daddy always told me I, I was I wasn't smart like you know most people. He's got to work twice as hard to ever amount to anything. Yeah. And so when God called me, I said, you know, God, you don't you don't really need somebody that's that's not all that smart to, to, to deliver this message. And one day He opened my eyes as I was reading Acts chapter four, where, where, where He was talking about you know Peter and and, and John were ignorant, unlearned men, but the people took note they'd been with Jesus. Yes. When I, when I saw that, 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 that was when I, I said, you know, God, I'll go where, where have you seen me? Doesn't that qualify us? A lot of people go, I just can't. But here is the unlearned and un uneducated people. I love that scripture that you're speaking of at Acts 4. But they have been with Jesus. If you want to be qualified for God's ministry, just be with Jesus. That's all, no, it, that, takes. That's all it takes. He calls us to not just to witness, but he calls us to be a witness wherever you go uh george i i i want i want people when they think of cowboys next time they watch a cowboy movie next time they see a horse i want them to pray for george george kilgore gore and the chaplains for the cowboys whatever it takes to have you have them reminded uh, of you to pray for you and i want when this interview is over I want you to bow your heads and, and I, I or or if you're driving, don't bow your heads. But if you're if you if, wherever you're hearing this, I want you to to take the time and pray for George and his wife and the ministries they're involved with. He needs your prayers and you need the practice. So go ahead and pray. My dad used to say that the preacher he used to say that was one of his favorite sayings. Wow. Pray for him. God that God would richly bless him. George, it is my privilege to bring you to Morning Moments today, and thank you so much for taking the time to be with us. Andy, we appreciate it, and, and, and God bless you and all the work you do as well. Down below, you're going to see a lot of information about him and their ministry. If you need to get a hold of him, want to know more about uh, Cowboys for Christ, please follow up, look at those sites, and uh, uh, just it, it just keep coming back for some more morning moments. Thank you. Thank you, George. And for you that's listening, God bless you. And, and uh, like I said, just keep coming back for some more morning moments.